Good morning, children. Welcome back to Magnetic Effects of Current. In this uh, module, we are going to learn about the construction and working of electric generator and motor. We'll just recollect Fleming's left hand rule. So stretch your forefinger, center finger and thumb mutually perpendicular to each other such that your forefinger points the direction of the magnetic field. Your center finger points the direction of the current. Then your thumb will point the direction of the um, force acting on the conductor. Now we will see direct current. When the electrons flow in one single direction, we call it as direct current. So this is the waveform of the direct current. In alternating current, the electron changes its direction from positive to negative alternatively. So this is the waveform where the electron changes direction from positive to negative alternatively. So these are some advantages of AC over DC. The generation of AC is cheaper than DC. The AC machines are stout and durable and needs less maintenance. The voltage can be increased or decreased using a transformer. AC transmitted at higher voltage uh, in longer distance as the power loss is almost negligible. We use inverters to convert DC into AC. And AC is converted to DC by using a rectifier. Now we'll see torque. When two equal and opposite forces are acting at a separate distance, we call it as torque. In this picture, you can see a force is acting in the upward direction and this one is acting in the uh, downward direction and it is separated by a distance d. When these two forces are equal, there will be a rotation. This is what we call it as torque. These are your examples for torque. When you are using your uh, steering wheel, when you are pedaling a cycle, the torque will be acting on it. Electric motor. Electric motor is a device which converts electric energy into mechanical energy. Now we'll see what is the principle behind it. When a coil carrying current is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a torque. As a result of this torque, the coil begins to rotate. The direction of rotation is shown by the uh, Fleming's left hand rule. So these are the parts of the DC motor. So we have DC power supply, field magnet, armature, carbon brushes and commutator. So this is the basic diagram of electric motor. This is the power supply, the carbon brushes. These are the commutator. This is the current carrying carrying coil which we call it as armature and these are the field magnets. So battery consists of a few cells and is connected across the brushes. The brushes pass the current to the split rings from where it is carried to the armature. So carbon brushes are made up of uh, carbon they are rectangular in shape and these are held against the surface of the commutator. The current is conducted from the external load to the armature through carbon brushes. So this is the diagram. These are the commutator and this is the carbon brushes. Split ring. It is a device which reverses the direction of the current through the circuit. This is also called as commutator. So this is the 
uh, split rings are commutator and the orange color thing is the carbon brushes and this is attached to the armature. Armature, it is a rectangular coil of insulated copper wire. It is placed between the poles of the magnetic field such that the arms of the armature are perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. Here you could see this is the armature and the current passing through this armature is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. Magnetic field, it is created by the permanent magnet or electro magnet. It envelops the armature and the current within. Now we will see the working of uh, electric motor. Now this is the DC uh, power supply. From here the current is passing through this commutator through carbon brushes. And when it is passing through this, by applying Fleming's left hand rule, this is the direction of the magnetic field and this is the direction of the current. So your thumb will point the direction of the motion of the conductor. So in this part, the motion of the conductor will be in the upward direction. Similarly, here, when you apply Fleming's left hand rule, it will point, the thumb will point downward direction. So here, two equal and opposite forces separated by a distance. So this results in a torque as a result of the torque, there will be a rotation of the armature. After completing half the rotation, by applying a right hand rule, one arm will be exper experiencing an outward force and here this arm will be experiencing an inward force. As a result of this, again there will be uh, rotation in the armature. After the armature has completed half the rotation, the current in the arm is reversed. One of the arm experience outward force and the other arm experience inward force which continues the rotation of the armature. So how can we increase the speed of the rotation? So we can increase it by increasing the strength of the current, by increasing the number of turns in the coil, by increasing the area of the armature and by increasing the strength of the magnetic field. Here are a few uses of DC motor. It is used to turn fans, pumps, compressors, etc. It is also used in uh, running the tram cars, toys, machines and household appliances. Now we'll see what is magnetic flux. It is a number of magnetic field lines passing through a given closed surface. So can you see here, this is the closed surface. The number of field lines passing through this is called as magnetic flux and its SI unit is Weber. This is the galvanometer. It is an instrument used to detect the presence of current in the circuit. So there will be a deflection in the galvanometer if the current passes through the circuit. Electromagnetic induction. So this is the process by which changing the magnetic field in the conductor induces a current in the another conductor. So here you could see uh, the magnet is pushed inside the coil. By this way there is change in the magnetic flux and due to this change in the magnetic flux, uh, EMF is induced, which can be seen by the uh, galvanometer deflection in the galvanometer. So as the number of turns in the coil increases, the deflection in the galvanometer increases. So this shows that as, a, that as the number of coil increases, the deflection or the induced current is high, increasing. So when there is a relative motion of the coil and the magnet, there will be change in the magnetic flux. As a result, EMF is induced, which can be detected by the deflection in the galvanometer.
So in this, um, in the first coil, alternating current voltage is connected. So we know that in alternating current, the first half will be positive and the next half will be negative. So there is change in the magnetic flux and this change in magnetic flux will induce current or EMF in the second coil. So this can be detected by the galvanometer deflection in the galvanometer. Now in this, you can see the first coil is connected with the DC uh, supply. So here there will not be much change since the magnetic flux will not change here. But if you are switching it on and off uh, repeatedly, there will be change in the magnetic flux which will induce uh, current in the second coil. Thereby there will be deflection in this galvanometer. So the magnitude of this EMF depends upon the magnitude of the magnetic field, rate of change of magnetic flux and the number of turns in the coil. The induced current is highest when the direction of the motion of the coil is at right angles to the magnetic field. And the direction of the induced current can be found by Fleming's right hand rule. So just like uh, left hand rule, instead of left hand, we are going to stretch the forefinger, center finger and thumb of right hand so that they are mutually perpendicular to each other. So if the thumb, forefinger and the center finger of the right hand are held perpendicular to each other such that Thumb points the direction of the motion of the conductor. Forefinger points the direction of the magnetic field. Then the center finger shows the direction of the induced current. So generator is the device which converts the mechanical energy to electrical energy. The principle behind it is Whenever there is a change in the magnetic field, EMF is induced in the coil. And the direction of the induced current is set by Fleming's right hand rule. So these are the parts of the generator, armature, field magnet, slip rings and brushes. So these are the slip rings. These are attached to the armature and it is placed inside the magnet. The slip rings are two hollow rings to which two ends of the armature coil are connected. Its purpose is to allow the electric contact with the brushes. So it is <clears throat> having contact with the brushes. Now this is the armature and this is the motion of the conductor and this is the direction of the magnetic field. So when you are applying Fleming's right hand rule so the armature, it is moving upward and this is the uh, forefinger which is pointing the direction of the magnetic field and the center finger will show the direction of the induced EMF. Similarly, when you are applying Fleming's rule in this end, the uh, induced current will be in the opposite direction. So the current will be moving in this direction and in this end, the current is moving in, in the forward direction. See, where the thumb, it is pointing downward. The motion is in the downward direction. This is the direction of the magnetic field and the induced current is in the upward direction at this end. 
So after every half rotation, each side of the coil starts moving in the opposite direction in the magnetic field. Therefore, the direction of the induced current also changes. So this is the output. The first half will be positive and the next half rotation it will be negative. The magnitude of the induced EMF can be increased by increasing the number of turns in the armature, by increasing the area of the armature, by increasing the speed of the rotation of the armature and by increasing the strength of the magnetic field. So instead of this uh, slip rings, if you are using split rings, the output will be DC current. So in the case of slip rings, the output will be alternating current. So with this, we come to an end of this uh, episode, children. I hope you understood. Please answer the questions which is given below. Write these answers in your notebook.